The Word of the Lord says, Psalm 119, verse 73, verse 76. Your hands made me and formed me. Give me understanding to learn your commands. Verse 76, may your unfailing love be my comfort according to your promise to your servant. Let your compassion come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. We have gathered today in worship. Let us bow our heads. Let us close our eyes and just take a moment before the Most High God and remember that His compassion, His love is unfailing. And that He invites us to worship Him today. He says, come, for you are welcome into my presence. Come. And let us pray that we are ready. Not just to lift up our voices, but to lift up our hearts, our hands to our King, our Lord, our Savior. Heavenly God, our loving Lord, the King of all, we give You praise. We give You honor. We give You glory. And we thank You, O Lord, because You are so faithful. Because Your love never fails. And even in this moment, no matter where we are, You are absolutely with us. And we hear Your words that say, Come. And dear God, we come to You in our brokenness, in our failings, in our shortcomings. Dear God, we come to You and we pray, O Lord, that if there is any stress or tension or anything, fear, whatever it is, that in You we would find deliverance this day in this moment. And help our voices, Father, in all that we are, join with that heavenly chorus singing, Holy, Holy, Holy. For You are mighty and for You are glorious. Help us, dear God, to worship You in spirit and truth and set aside distractions or anything that would take us from our focus on You. In the most awesome name of our Savior, Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. For the glory of God, let us begin our worship as we together sing this next song. Put our hands together and worship the living God. Greater is the one who's in us. Greater is the one who calls our name. He will never fail. Stronger is the one. 
God is fighting for us always. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. For your love endures forever. Oh, your love endures. church we celebrate women's day it's a or savior sangam day a day when we recognize that god has called all of us as his people to be his ministers to be his servants in this world and so there'll be a special order of worship as we celebrate women's day and it's also a day that's important for us as a parish for our Sunday school is starting. And so we'll also have a special teacher's dedication mid-service. Now, let's just prepare ourselves to give God glory, honor, and praise as we enter into this time of worship. Remember, He alone is worthy to be glorified. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. And to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, forever. forever. Amen. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who has come and has to come again in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy art thou, O God. Holy art thou, mighty Lord. Holy art thou, O Lord. O Lord, the Messiah is crucified for us. Have mercy on us. Holy art thou, O God. Holy art thou, mighty Lord. Holy art thou, immortal Lord. O Lord, the Messiah is crucified for us. Have mercy upon us. Holy art thou, O God. Holy art thou, mighty Lord. Holy art thou, immortal Lord. O Lord, the Messiah is crucified for us. Have mercy on us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have compassion and mercy upon us. O Lord, accept our prayers and worship and have mercy upon us. Glory, Glory to, be you, to you, O God. Glory be to you, o Creator of all. Glory, Glory to you, o King, the Messiah. We have, you have compassion on your sinful servants. servants. Bless us, O Lord, our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from the evil one. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. O Lord of all, all creation, we glorify your name as you are God from everlasting to everlasting. 
We thank you for enabling us to love, care for, and respect diversity amongst us, thereby participating in the building of thy holy kingdom in and through the church and especially through the activities of the women's ministry for the past 101 years. We thank you for the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit which arrives in us us in our weaknesses. And we also pray that this Savior Sangam day, worship and our praise may be for your glory in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Now please join me in this special prayer of confession. Your response will be, Lord, have mercy on us and forgive us. Lord, have mercy on us and forgive us. Take warning, Jerusalem, or I will turn away from you and make your land desolate so no one can live in it. Jeremiah 6 verse 8. Although we are aware that women are equal partners in the ministry of the Lord's kingdom, we have been highlighting our limitations to keep away from kingdom works. We have disregarded the discipleship of Christ and deliberately rejected his teachings. For these shortcomings of ours, Lord, have mercy on us and forgive us. To the weak, I become weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22. Though we know that women should function as change agents in society, we have not acted accordingly. We have strived for our personal benefits an upliftment without caring for the weak. We have failed to empower the downtrodden and be a comfort to the ailing. For these shortcomings of ours, Lord, have mercy on us and forgive us. O oh Lord, we thank you for calling and setting apart the Mars Sivisik Station Sivya Sangam to be an instrument of social change by means of proclamation of the gospel. We thank you for the selfless hard work of our foremothers and all the great women who are now working in various places to the fullest of their capacity to be driving force for the change so as to enlighten the world. Let us together say this prayer of dedication. Eternal, Eternal God, Lord, we, we the members of the Sevilla Sangam dedicate, dedicate ourselves, ourselves for the ministry of God's kingdom. kingdom. Consolation of the world, development of the society, and growth of the church. Help us and our families to lead a Christian witnessing life with dedication and mutual respect. We submit ourselves to act as the channels of God's love, which was revealed with the cross of Calvary. We also dedicate ourselves to be proponents of the church, which is the body of Christ, and to let our light shine before us. Accept our dedication in the name of the Triune God. Amen. Lord, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, forever. Amen. The word of the Lord says in Psalm 95, verses 2 and 3, Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and stall Him with music and song. For the Lord is a great God, the great King above all gods. As we now sing, all in all, let us give Him praise. Oh 
everyone may be seated. The lessons may now be read. The first lesson is taken from Numbers chapter 27, verses 1 to 11. Numbers chapter 27, verses 1 to 11. The daughters of Zelophed, son of Hepher, the son of Gilead, the son of Macher, the son of Manasseh, belonged to the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. The names of the daughters were Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milcah, and Terza. They approached the entrance to the tent of meeting and stood before Moses, Eleazar, the priest, the leaders, and the whole assembly, and said, Our father died in the desert. He was not among Korah's followers who banded together against the Lord, but he died for his own sin and left no sons. Why should our father's name disappear from his clan because he had no son? Give us property among our father's relatives. So Moses brought this case before the Lord, and the Lord said to him, What Zelophed's daughters are saying is right. You must certainly give them property as an inheritance among their father's relatives and turn their father's inheritance over to them. So say to the Israelites, if a man dies and leaves no son, turn his inheritance over to his daughter. If he has no daughter, give his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, give his inheritance to his father's brothers. If his father had no brothers, give his inheritance to the nearest relative in his clan that he may possess it. This is to be a legal requirement for the Israelites, as the Lord commanded Moses. Here ends the sec first lesson. The second lesson is taken from Acts 16, 11 to 15. Acts 16, 11 to 15. So setting sail from Toras, made a direct voyage to Samothrace, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia, and a Roman colony. We remained in this city some days, and on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside where we suppose there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the woman who had come together. On one who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Diatira, a seller of purple goods, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And after she was baptized, and her household as well, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. Here ends the second lesson. Let us now move into a time of confession. First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Our Christian life is a journey of repentance and renewal. General confession is acknowledging our unrighteousness before God and the need of forgiveness. Please join me in this psalm of confession. Then have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. Exodus chapter 25, verse 8. Gracious God, though you expected us to be your holy temples in the social structure, we have forgotten that we were called and chosen for it. 
for this shortcoming of ours. Have, have mercy, mercy on, on us. us. Psalm 38. Please respond by saying, have mercy on us. O light of the world, the Son of God, we come to your divine presence. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. O awesome one, who is worthy of praise and who works wonders, we come to your divine presence. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. O Lord, we, because we have sinned and are guilty of breaking your commandments, we come to your divine presence. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. O Lord, of those in heaven and the refuge to those on earth, have, have mercy, mercy on us. Now, if you'd like to kneel, sit down, or continue standing, please feel free to do so as we sing this song in confession, Mighty to Save. that we have so much to be thankful for. As it is written in 1 Thessalonians 5:18, give thanks in all circumstances, 
For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. O oh Lord, we are thankful for the universal Christian church, and especially for the Mullingara Marthama Syrian church that has instilled in us the pure gospel, true teachings, righteousness, and ethics, which enabled our faith formation and spiritual nourishment. We are thankful for our leaders, the Most Reverend Joseph Marthama Metropolitan Thidimeni, Veliat Metropolitan Thidimeni, Suffragan Metropolitan Thidimeni, bishops, priests, evangelists, Sunday school teachers, and parents for the spiritual grace we receive. Please join us as we sing this song of thanksgiving, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Let us come to our Lord with our requests, asking him to bless us and hear us. Philippines chapter 4 verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Please join me in this intercessory prayer. Your response will be, Lord, please answer our prayers. Lord, please answer our prayers. Remember the nation you purchased long ago, the people of your inheritance whom you redeemed, Mount Zion, where you dwelt. Psalm chapter 74, verse 2. O Lord, you created man and breathed life into him. Help us to accept diversity among us and to function with mutual respect and care. We pray for all the women empowerment organizations that strive for this, especially Malangara Marthoma Suvisesha Sevika Sangam and its president, Right Reverend Dr. Abraham Mar Paolo Stirmeni, the vice president, general secretary, treasurer, managing committee members, savings, office staff, diocese, center, zone, and shaka office bearers, and Sevia Sangam members. Your response? Lord, Lord please, please answer, answer our, our prayers. prayers. We pray for the blessed conduct of the diversified ministers of the Sevia Sangam. We entrust into your hands the activities of the Vanita Mandiram, Salem Bhavanam, Balika Bhavan, Snehatiram Halfway Home, Sri Jana Vikasana Samiti, Nursery Teachers Training School, Kindergarten, the Upper Primary School, Ashrams, Hostels, Nursery School, Vishranti Bhavan, the various programs conducted at the mission fields at Anakara, Nilambur, Mukutala, and Neduvalur, Tailoring Center, Vanita Bodhini, and Kuduma Jodi, and pray for your blessings upon these. Lord, Lord please, please answer, answer our, our prayers. prayers. We pray for children trapped in torture and exploitation, women working in unsafe circumstances, those tormented by ailments, those who are unable to get medical treatment, those suffering from financial hardships, transgenders, the elderly, the lonely, the bereaved, and the orphaned. Lord, Lord, please, please answer, answer our, our prayers. Let us submit the entire human race that has been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic into God's hand and pray. Let us pray for a healing for those who have been infected. Let us pray for the success of effort to contain the spread of the disease. Let us pray for our healthcare personnel let us also pray for those who have been affected by natural disasters and climate-related calamities. Compassionate Lord, as we call upon you with a repentant heart, please help us and heal our nation. Lord, Lord please, please answer, answer our prayers. Let us together proclaim our faith in reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one true God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. We believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who first manifest salvation, came down from heaven, 
and was incarnated by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and he was crucified also for us, in the days of Pontius Pilate, suffered and died and was buried. The third day he rose again by his Father's holy will, ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, and of his kingdom there will be no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together has been worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets and apostles. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the new life of the world to come. Amen. Peace be with you all. May the Lord make us all worthy to listen to his word. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, which proclaims life and salvation to the whole world, as recorded by the Apostle St. John. Blessed are you who has come and will come again. Praise to the Father who sent him for our salvation. May his blessing be upon us. In the days of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, word of life, God incarnate of the Blessed Virgin Mary, it happened in this manner. So we believe and affirm. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with the woman. But no one asked, what do you want or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come. See a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Peace be with you all. And with, with you also. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Today, for the very first time in many months, we have opened up the church to a maximum capacity of about 40, 50. And it's good to see more people within the sanctuary. But those of you who are online and worshiping from your home or wherever you might be, we pray that God is speaking and moving in all of your lives as we together join in this experience of worship. Today is also important because Sunday school has started. And this morning, our kids were eager, not just to sing songs, but also to learn from the Word of God. Today we have our teachers who are starting off this new Sunday school year different than before. It's all virtual. But our God, who is present in every home and in every space, is using our teachers to speak through them into the hearts and lives of our children of the next generation. And so right now, we're going to have a time of special dedication. And I invite all of our Sunday school teachers, no matter where you may be, to stand. To stand and remember that you stand in the power of His grace. That you stand in the presence of the Most High God. And that whether you teach or preach or share from the Word or from your experience, you do so in the presence of the Most High. It is important to dedicate yourself. Dedication means you're setting yourself apart for this very purpose. You are entrusted with the Word of God. And this is not just a book or a Bible that you hold in your hands, but this is the living, true Word of the Most High God. And so you're called to greater responsibility. And with that responsibility comes greater accountability. 
Because all the children that have been entrusted to you, you are accountable for in teaching and communicating. Those of you who are teachers, those of you who are continuing as teachers, those of you who are serving in this new capacity for the first time, from here on out, you will always be teachers, whether you actively teach in the Sunday school or not. As the children grow into young men and women, they will always say and look at you as their teacher. And so be a teacher. Be a teacher of His Word. Not just through the lessons, but also through your life and through your witness. Because that truly is the greatest message and lesson that you can impart to your children. And so I urge you, all of our teachers, do not take this ministry lightly, but take it and understand it and hold it in great reverence. Prepare and remember that you are responsible and accountable not just to the children, but to the Lord Most High who has given you this opportunity. Never see this as a burden, but see this as an opportunity. Don't think of it as time lost, but think of it as time gained. To be in the Word, to learn and grow, and to share. And remember also that all of you as teachers are right there. Right there, First hand with the children, you stand there in, in that point of their life. And perhaps God can use you and God will use you to direct them in the course of life. Life in abundance. And so teachers, your ministry has eternal consequence. Eternal consequence. Life and death in the life of these young children and of the next generation. So, take it very seriously. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that whatever we bring and say, well, this is all that I am. This is all that I have. Just like that little boy who brought five loaves and two fish. What I have, I offer. Jesus, multiply it. Whatever you bring, God will multiply. Bless and strengthen. And I know in confidence and in faith that this year, God will bless all of our children to confront the power of His Word, to know His grace, and all of our teachers to grow an understanding of his word and be convicted towards witness. Teachers, as you now stand, I invite you to take this oath. It's entitled an oath of responsibility. Now this oath is conducted mid-service for a reason. This oath is not something that you casually do. But it is a part of the worship experience where two or three have gathered in His name, He is there. And so you take this oath or this promise, not really before me or before anyone else, but really you're taking this oath before God. You're making a promise to God. And that is what you should remember. This is my promise to you, God. You may repeat this oath after me as a sign of your dedication to His will and trusting you as teachers. We, the teachers of Redeemer Martha Ma Church Sunday School, we, the, we the teachers, teachers of the Redeemer Martha Ma Church, Church Sunday, Sunday School, School, hereby yield ourselves, hereby yield ourselves, to the ministry of teaching. To the ministry of teaching. Our children. 
our children, our children the love of God, the the love of God through, Jesus Christ. through Jesus Christ. We believe, we believe that, salvation comes that salvation comes from the life, from the life death, 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 burial, burial and resurrection. And resurrection of Jesus Christ, of Jesus, of Jesus Christ. Christ, and is for all who believe, and is for all who believe. We commit ourselves, we commit ourselves for witnessing the message, for witnessing the message of this gospel, of this gospel in our daily lives, in our daily lives, and for faithfully following, and for faithfully following the holy commandments, the holy commandments of our Lord God, of our Lord God. We believe that the word of God, we believe that the word of God, consisting of 66 books, consisting of 66 books, is inspired by the Holy Spirit, is inspired by the Holy Spirit, and that it is and that, and that it is the ultimate authority, the ultimate authority for instruction, for instruction, correction, correction, and guiding our lives, and guiding our lives. As members of the Martha Church, Church, we acknowledge the seven sacraments administered by the Church and will adhere to the faith and practices of the Martha Church. We shall strive to follow Jesus and be examples to our students. We acknowledge that we have professed this before the congregation of believers and acknowledge that we are accountable to them and to God. We ask for the grace of God in this matter. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me? And members of the congregation present within the sanctuary or at home, would you pray with me? moment of silence, let us pray over all the teachers who have taken up this new mandate of ministry in this challenging time. Let us pray that God give them supernatural strength and power. O oh Lord, our God, look with mercy on Your servants who have offered themselves to the holy service of leading the children to You. O oh Holy Spirit, imprint the words. Come to Jesus. Bring every child to Jesus on the hearts of these Your servants. Kindly lead every teacher to a fuller knowledge of Your holy truth and speak through each one let them not depend on their own ability to teach, but let them be guided by the Holy Spirit personally to receive your holy word. O Holy Spirit, remind each one of them of his or her responsibility to your holy church so that they never take the responsibility lightly. Lord, we also pray that the students we teach will one day respond to your call to teach the next and coming generation. All this we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
be upon you all, especially our teachers, this day. Amen. 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 Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. For you, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living. Sanctuary for you. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High God. Praise the Lord. I truly thank God and praise God for this wonderful opportunity that He has given to us again on a Sunday to meet and to gather and to worship Him. Today is a special day for us as a church throughout the world, for we recognize, honor, and celebrate the women's ministries that the church has upheld over the past 101 years. Today is Savia Sangam Day. In our church here at Redeemer, we call it women's ministry. Same thing, different name. But it's a ministry that is really in and through the women that continues to impact the world in amazing ways. Just to give a brief history about the Savior Sangam and the initiation of the women's ministry within the Marthama Church, I want to share a few details. It's been 101 years since the Savior Sangam came into being. And it was inaugurated during the Maharaman Convention in the year 1919 under the leadership of Abraham Marthama, suffragan metropolitan, who gave the Sangam continued support and inspiration. I believe it was around 1920 when in the United States, for the first time, women were allowed to vote. And so we understand that the world was a very different place than how we see it today. And yet here, we see that in the church, as part of this revival movement within the Maharaman Convention came this new ministry, this initiation to spread the Word of God to bring many to Christ through the women of the church. Every woman of the Marthama Church above the age of 18 is a member of this women's ministry. And there are branches throughout in all of the parishes. I want to also mention a name that we can't forget when we think of the Savior Sangam. And that is the name of Mrs. Kandama Varghese. The women's ministry owes much to this woman who through her self-sacrifice and work served as a secretary for over 20 years traveling far and wide and organizing these branches of the women's ministry in parishes. She continued in evangelistic work among Christians and non-Christians. And she also served as the general secretary for a few years. At present, Dr. Mrs. Annama George serves, and, and then 
uh, served as the organizing secretary for 14 years. When we think of the ministry of the women, let us also remember that their ministry is not limited to one space or place, but to understand that God, in Christ Jesus, has invited all, both men and women, to be change makers. That's really the, the theme of the church today, women as change makers. As we continue, though, our sermon series, today and this, throughout this month, we're thinking of the theme, People of God, a Call to Holiness. And truly, when we look at the gospel portion that was read, we see here how God, Jesus Christ, used one woman to impact and change the lives of many people. In fact, an entire village towards Christ. If you would, turn with me in your Bibles to the Gospel that was read, the Gospel according to St. John chapter 4, verses 27 through 30. And I'm going to read a few verses from that chapter. Verse 29, 28 and 29, Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Verse 39. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in Him, Jesus Christ, because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to Him, they urged Him to stay with them. And He stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly God, our loving Lord and Savior, we thank you for this time. We come before your holy word, which is truth and life, and speak to us, revive in us your breath. Father, fill us with the power of Your Holy Spirit and embrace us, O Lord, in Your love. Dear God, may we discern Your words. May now the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in Thy sight. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Many of you may have heard, some of you may have not, of a woman by the name of Osceola McCarty. I don't know how many of you have heard of her. She's not one of the famous women that you'd see, perhaps a book written about. She's not one of the women that you'd perhaps learn about in school. But she, nonetheless, was a woman who impacted and continues to impact the lives of countless people. Osceola McCarty was born in the early 1900s in Mississippi. She was an African-American woman. And her birth and her upbringing was really quite traumatic. So much so that perhaps this is not the place to share it. But yet she had a very traumatic upbringing. Regardless, she desired to do something, to be something, and to make something of her life. She had hoped that one day she would become a nurse. And so, even as a young child, she went to elementary school with the hopes and aspirations that she could become a nurse, so that she would help and support those who are sick and struggling. After some years in elementary school, her mother and her aunt became quite sick. And she had to drop out of elementary school in order to take care of her mom and aunt. She took care of them by becoming what was then known as a washerwoman. Today we have washing machines. She was a washerwoman. 
That is, she would get pennies, coins, cents, whatever it was, change. When she went to different houses, asking them, begging them in some cases, can I wash your clothes? I'll wash your clothes if you will give me a little something. And this is one way in which she supported her mom and her aunt. She never became the nurse she wanted to be. She never got to go to school or to college. She never got to work in a hospital in any capacity. But regardless, she changed the lives of many. How so, you ask? Osceola had saved the change that she received from working as a washerwoman. And she saved all of that money and she had put it into a bank. She decided, I didn't need a car. I don't need that. I can walk or get to places I need to go, public transportation or somehow. So she never bought a car. At one point, she had about $150,000 in her bank account. She took that money out, $150,000, and she went to the University of Mississippi. And she said, here, take this. I want you to use this as a scholarship endowment fund for any and all students regardless of their race or background, who want to study and are unable to do so because of their financial situation. And what she started then, she passed away maybe about 20 years or so ago, not too long ago, but what she started then continues to impact the lives of many. Now people, young children, who want to go to college, who want to become a nurse, who want to pursue their aspirations and hopes of helping, of supporting others, they have an opportunity. And her only real request was they be people in need. They be people in need. Here's one woman who much of the world has never heard of and who much of the world may never hear of. But here's a woman who through what many may consider to be a small act, but through her act of sacrifice, of saying, I don't need this, but I can give it to those who do. And because of her, generations will continue, even after her death, continue to remember her and honor her as a woman who changed her, their lives. Christ calls all of us, and especially women, all of you. This day, we, we declare that to be instruments of transformation in the lives of others, in your families, and in the church. See, it's not just about change. Because our presence, by what we say, what we do, we do impact some sort of change. But that change, what is it like? What Christ wants from each of us is to be agents of transformation. Can we bring radical difference for the gospel and glory of the Lord wherever we are placed. So I want us to think about this woman. I want us to think about what it means when we say we are called to holiness. Here is a woman. John chapter 4, if we read in its entirety, we understand that this woman, her name is not given simply the Samaritan woman. She went to the well with a jar to collect water in the, noon, in the noontime. It was a time when no one else would be there. And she went there 
Because she had no other choice, she felt. She had a past and a history that to many were despicable. And many rejected. She had a history that Jesus Christ calls out and says, I know, I know what your past is like. And there, at 12 noon, the height of the, the day, she's there attempting to collect water, and Christ meets her. Christ sought her, went to her, and began to speak to her. And we can see just even in this exchange, she says, are you not a Jew? Then she says, it seems to me that you're a prophet. And then she goes on to say, and understand that this is the Christ. There's a change, a transition in her understanding of what we, she first saw as a man, a Jew, to whom she later believed as her Savior, as the Messiah. At what stage in our life are we when we look at Christ? Is he still just another man, a Jew, or do we see him as our Savior? Jesus dialogues with her. And here is a woman who was so insecure, so hurt, so ashamed, and perhaps fearful that she went there in midday to collect water, but yet she felt secure and safe in the presence of Jesus. The Word of God reminds us in how Jesus responds here that no matter where we're coming from, no matter what our experiences, our history, our past may be, Jesus says, you can feel safe and secure and welcome in my presence. Yes, the world may reject you. Yes, your family, your friends, here an entire village perhaps may have considered her less than. But Jesus says no. She never once in this dialogue felt insecure in her discussions in speaking to Christ. There is safety and security and love and embrace in peace in the presence of Jesus Christ. That's where transformation begins. That's where holiness really begins. In the presence of the Holy One. In the presence of Christ Almighty. Holiness, holy, simply means set apart. And I want you to see what's happening here. I said a transformation. Look at verse 39 of John chapter 4. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. And I want you to look at verse 41 now. And because of his words, many more became believers. So there is a distinction distinction being made here in verse 41. The villagers or the Samaritans of that town are now identified as what? Believers. They're given a new name. They're given a new identification. They're under a new category. You are now believers. Samaritans, yes, they were despised by the Jews. We know that. In fact, the Jews would walk around Samaria just so that they wouldn't have to come across them. But here we see that this woman becomes such an instrument of transformation that an entire village, most, are now declared as believers. They're given this new distinction. 
I want us to remember, especially women on this day, that all of our decisions have the impact to change lives, to change direction, not just in our homes, in our communities, in the lives of our friends and the people we know. Our decisions do make a difference. And it should be the right difference for the Lord Christ. She was a woman who was ostracized. A woman who was living with stigma. A woman who was looked down upon. A woman who had no respect in her town. And in many ways, that would make anyone, man or woman, feel inadequate, insecure. But in the safety and security of Jesus Christ, she saw that she was so much more. I mentioned Osceola. There are different ways that she could have responded to her situation. My hopes are shattered. I have to work for pennies. But yet she still found a way to fulfill her true desire, which was to impact the lives of many. The Samaritan woman came to Jesus and she realized she could be and do so much more. She realized in that moment that her past, her failings, her sins, her shortcomings were no longer going to hold her back. But with Jesus, she can be propelled into a new and brighter future. And just looking at what happens here, you realize that there is change that takes place in her first before she's ever able to be an instrument of transformation in the lives of others. Holiness begins with the change of priority. Verse 28, it says, Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come and see. She had gone there to gather water. That was her priority initially. But in that space, that time, that dialogue with Christ, that all changed. It's no longer about the water that I drink. It's no longer about my physical need. Jesus says, I have food. He tells his disciples I, in verse 32, I have food that you do not know about. And they're even thinking about physical food. And for her, yes, I may be thirsty. Yes, I may need water. But this is different. This Jesus, this Jesus is greater than any thirst that I could ever have. And I have to go tell. See, that signifies a change that took place within her. Letting go of the jars akin to when the disciples lay, left everything, their nets, their boats, is akin to Zacchaeus saying, I will give back four times as much. Out of those of I've cheated, I've, I'll give half of my possessions to the poor. See, when we encounter Christ, there is an experience of change, of letting go. And she realizes, I don't need to hold on to this when I'm holding on to Christ. There's a change of priority. And what else? we see here is here is that timid, scared, fearful, ashamed, perhaps rejected, rebuked woman standing at midday attempting to collect water on one hand. And then on the other hand, we see here a woman who is now bold and courageous and says, I will go to herself. She goes, and I will tell everyone what I have seen. What a change. A woman who tried to stay hidden for much, 
of what it seems her life now says, I don't need to hide because I've met Jesus. And let me be bold and share my experience. Her words change. The way she speaks to others change. Her relationship with the villagers, no matter how they regarded her, she tells them her encounter and experience with Jesus. Change begins first within us. And we encounter Christ anew. What she says here is also important. She says, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. When we look even at her discussions with Jesus, one of the things that she says about the Messiah in John chapter 4, verse 25, it also resonates with the book of Isaiah where she affirms that when the Messiah comes, he will explain everything. So that's her sense of proof. The Messiah will tell me. And she says in verse 29, come and see. Holiness is an invitation to see. See, I want you to look at that clearly. Come and see. And then when you look at verse 42, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves. On one hand, she says, come and see. Another, the villagers then say, we have now heard. What is this? This difference. It says in verse 39, many were drawn to Jesus because of her testimony. Many came because of her. Just want to pause a moment and ask all of you to think. What are people drawn to because of us? What kind of lessons Life, experiences, are they drawn to because of us? This woman, she didn't have much to declare in terms of history, but she said, come and see Jesus. And they were drawn to him. And why see? I think it's because when she saw Jesus Christ, she realized that Jesus saw into her. See, Jesus saw into her life like no one ever had. Jesus saw what she had kept hidden. Jesus saw the shame that she was dealing with, the guilt that she was suffering and struggling under. And Jesus loved her still. Jesus welcomed her still. And I believe that when she encountered and spoke to Christ, the words came alive and she saw love. She saw acceptance. She saw for the first time what love really was. Christ wasn't there to condemn her. But through Christ, she was able to know true faith, life, and truly understand who Jesus was, the Messiah. For her, she wanted others to see what she saw. Here is love. Here is peace. Here is everything you and I have been searching for. And she goes because she realizes that not only was she broken, but so too the people around her. Do you remember Isaiah when he was called out? Isaiah chapter 6. He says, I am a sinful man. And I am amongst a sinful people. And that's empathy. That's compassion for others. And this is what he says. In the same way, 
This is what even Peter, he says to Jesus, go away from me for I'm a sinful man. And Jesus says, get up and I will make you fishers of men. Right? And here is a woman who sees something that she's never seen before, that love, that embrace, that acceptance, that welcome. She realizes, this is too good for me to hold to myself because in my town, my people, my family, my village, they're also broken. And they too need to see, to experience, what I see and what I experience. Holiness is an invitation to see. To see Christ. And it says, they, they were drawn to Christ by her. And we could just imagine how that, that conversation with Christ had so changed her that she could then draw others to Christ. But, Verse 42, they made the decision on their own to believe. Because they now declare, yes, now it's not just because of you, but now we've also seen and heard. And now we believe and we declare that He is the Savior of the world. Not just my Savior, He is my Savior. And not just the Savior of the Jews. Not just the Savior of the Samaritans. But He is the Savior of the world. And they begin to understand Jesus. Jesus in a way that they had never imagined. He is our Savior. He is my Savior. He is your Savior. And may our words, our decisions, our actions bring others to Christ. In His presence, we are secure. When we understand what our real priority is, everything else, our food, our drink, our wealth, our time, whatever you may call it, comes second. And Jesus Christ invites us again, all of us, to come and to see. Be changed, be transformed. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Any one of you may lead us. Mighty Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day you've just given us just to come together and just spend time in meditation upon your word, Father God. We thank you for um, this time, Father, amidst this pandemic, Father God. You've given us a space, Father, just to come together and worship, Father God. Father God, we are um, sorry for, for taking these simple gifts, Father God, for granted, Father. We, we thank you and we praise you, Father, for this. Dear Jesus, we uh, lift up women today, Father God, especially women in the church, Father God. We, we bring it into your presence, Father God, because, Father, you're a God of knowing everything, Father God. As you knew the deepest desires of the Samaritan woman, Father God, we, we, you know the deepest desires of our hearts, Father God, and you know the deepest desires of this culture and this, 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 this country, Father God. We uplift... Um, the female role models in our life, Father God. We lift them up, Father God, that they may have a space, Father God, and that they may be um, noticed, Father God, for who you created them to be, Father God. And we, we just pray over their life, Father, and we pray a blessing over um, this, this day, Father God, as we lift them up into your presence, Father God. Father God, help us to understand the sacrifices and the, and the life that they, they lead, Father God, and that, that we may be able to lift them up, Father God, wherever we are, Father. I pray um, for the Redeemer family, Father. Thank you for what you have done here, Father God, and what you are going to do, Father God. As we move into this season, Father God, amidst all the, uh, uh, the difficulty and, and not knowing what's going to happen, Father God, we pray that we may be 
um, people of mission, Father God, in, in the communities that we're placed, Father God. We pray for the church as a whole, Father God, at this time when we, when we go um, into the season, Father God, the holiday seasons that we move into, Father God, I pray that you help us, Father, to see the needs in our community, Father God, see the needs in and around our areas as well, Father God, that we may be bold in your presence, Father, to, to lead a life that's worthy of your mission, Jesus. Um, dear Jesus, also what we pray, um, that this worship may be acceptable to you, Father God, that we may be able to lift our voices and praise you, Father God, and and know that, that these moments, Father God, are a privilege, Father God, that we may come into your awesome presence and just proclaim your name, Father. It is such a rare blessing, Father. We pray for those that are around the world, Father, that are just extending your name, Father. We lift them into your presence, Father, and we pray a blessing over their life as well, Father. Thank you for this time, Father God, and I pray that this may be acceptable to you. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. This time, those who have celebrated their birthday or wedding anniversaries, you may please stand. We come before God, who is the giver of life and the gifter of marriage and all the blessings we experience therein. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly God, our loving Lord and Savior, we fall before you. You love us, Father, and your love for us is beyond comprehension. Father God, we submit into your hands all those who now stand. O oh Lord, as we honor them, Father, and remember, O oh Lord, that it is you who have granted those who are celebrating their birthdays another year in their life. Grant them wisdom and understanding, help and strength to lead a life that is pleasing to you to walk with you, to fulfill your desires. Father, use them to be agents of transformation in this world. Father God, we pray especially also, O oh Lord, for all those who are celebrating married life. Father, we pray that you would enable them to understand this sacred covenant and that they would grow in love of each other and of God each and every day, that all decisions would give you glory, that their family life would be like a light shining in the midst of darkness, that you would provide as you have for every need and every experience, that their future would be more blessed. Bless us all. In the name of Christ our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Let us together sing from the inside out as we conclude our worship.
I'll carry a podium wherever I go. Good afternoon. I pray that you all are doing well. Thank you for joining us today for our live stream service, our ACT service. For the links for the upcoming services and activities, please refer to our website at redeemermtc.org. Redeemermtc.org. Thank <laughs> um, also, please go to redeemermtc dot churchcenter.com to subscribe to the various groups and uh, the calendar to stay updated with the upcoming events and resources. Next Sunday, we'll have Sunday School Assembly online at 10 a.m. And next Sunday, we'll have our Holy Communion service that we haven't had for a very long, long time. So we'll be having that next Sunday at 1145. So if you go to our website and sign up for the service, um, uh, it, those who are signed up will be permitted to come. So please go to the website and sign up like those who did today. Today was our first Sunday school day of virtual Sunday school class. A welcome back letter was sent out to all parents with details of upcoming service Sunday, school, Sunday school this year. Any updates will be communicated via email and can also be found in our church, church's, uh, children's ministry group. So please re remember to download the church app and subscribe. Additionally, the Southeast Regional Center A Sunday School will be hosting a back-to-school meeting for Sunday school students and teachers on Saturday, September 19, 2020, at 11 a.m. via Zoom. Ms. Elizabeth Johnson Kachima from Staten Island Martha Church will be delivering the message focused on the theme, Let's Get Moving. The Zoom details will be sent via email and group me. If you have any questions about the children's ministry, please contact the Sunday School sub Superintendent, Liza George. We had our church annual picnic uh, yesterday at Shepherd Lake uh, Recreation uh, at Ringwood Park. For those who did sign up, um, I would like to thank Sajin, uh, Tenu, and Priyanka, our coordinators, and all those who volunteered to make an amazing opportunity for fellowship. So thank you. This, this, Wednesday, <clears throat> me, this Wednesday, we will have um, uh, our next round table. Uh, the, it will be titled COVID-19, What I Need to Know to Keep My Children Safe This Fall. Please join us this with September 13th at 7 p.m. as a part of our continuing online series for an online panel discussion revol around keeping our children safe. This panel will consist of Dr. Preeti George, Dr. Jenny John, and Dr. Bessie G. Varghese. Um, this is another series, once again, that we, we're continuing and has valuable information. So please make every effort to join via Zoom and look online for our details around that. Um, Thursday, this coming Thursday at 9 p.m., we'll continue to have our men's Bible study. And this Friday is the weekly 6.30 6, uh, p.m. youth meeting. And of course, join us for Saturday morning prayer call at 8 a.m. Birthdays. We have a special birthday to Michael George, Liza Matthew, Amanda Vorghese, Roy Poiko, and today, Gita Prince. Happy birthday. <laughs> Once again, please go to our website, subscribe to the app, and please uh, reach out to me if you would like to be added to our email list or group me. Once again, thank you for joining us. Praise the Lord. Thank God that he's given us another day to worship him. Just as we heard today from the gospel, may our hearts be changed so that we would work for his change, his transformation in the world today. I also want to reiterate a thanks uh, to our picnic coordinators. Yesterday we had an amazing time. And we just want to really once again thank Sajin Tanu Priyanka, who served as our picnic coordinators this year. Um, it was very challenging, as you could possibly imagine. And there were also many people who worked behind the scenes, the activities, the games coordinators, the food. There were so, so many people who worked behind the scenes. And just on behalf of the Redeemer Martha Church family, we just want to sincerely thank you all for all the efforts that you've taken. Thank you so much. It was awesome. As was announced, we do have Holy Communion service, Holy Kurbana service next Sunday.
please sign up online on the website if you would like to come. There's only a limited number of seats available so that we comply to state regulations. So please do sign up um, if you'd like to come. We will also be doing everything we can to make sure that it is that we're following the safety protocols uh, issued by by the, the agencies. Um, so disposable spoons, whatever else is needed to make sure that um, safety is a priority next week. And please also keep the worship service in prayers. May God bless us and strengthen us throughout this week and all the days of our life, especially be over our Sunday school teachers and children in this new Sunday school year. God bless you all. Let's all stand for the peace. Peace be with you all. May the grace, blessings, and peace of God Almighty rest, abide, strengthen, and encourage each one of us this day and forevermore. Amen. give you control consume me from the inside out lord let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never ending your glory goes beyond all things and the cry of my heart is to bring you praise on the inside out on my soul cries out everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never ending your glory goes beyond all things and the cry of my heart